Joining us right now is Trump policy advisor and former uh, Wilbur's Group CEO, John McNabb. John, thanks very much for weighing in this morning. Do you no, think thanks, this new information, the fact that premiums are going to skyrocket next year up 25% on average, is that going to factor into voters' opinions before the election? What's your sense of the impact? Well, it certainly will. I think it will, Maria, absolutely. Uh, I recall when the president said that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. I also remember Mrs. Pelosi excited and giddy about getting this thing signed so she could read what it said. Yeah. I, uh, if you think about all of that, I think it's going to play, play well for Trump and, and against the Democratic side of things with, uh, uh, with this current election coming up. So go through the reasons why we're seeing this incredible spike. I mean, we all know that Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, was a failure before this because businesses are, are cutting back. They're not hiring the number of employees. It's too expensive uh, that they'd like to. Individuals are, are living paycheck to paycheck because of the cost. And now this. Are just The enrollees are sicker than people thought, and there aren't enough in, uh, healthy people enrolling. Is that the issue? Well, I think that is the issue. If you think about America and how we've become a great economic power, it's through the market. And what, what this Obamacare legislation and this act has done is take the market out of the loop in our, our health care. I actually think the Obama administration and the Democrats wanted a single-payer solution all way back when this thing was formulated, and now we're close to getting that, and that totally takes the market away from health care and from Americans and what it does is it puts the government in control of our health care. It doesn't work that well in, in uh, England and my friends from Canada when they need serious health care they come to the United States. Sure. So we have a real problem with this. John, it's Dagan McDowell, but is this a runaway freight train in terms of being the Republicans or anyone who's conservative or really anyone who can do math in Washington? They can't put a stop to it at this point because it's already out there and it has largely been implemented I mean, to the detriment of people trying to buy insurance. Well, it's a, good, it's a very good question, and I'm not qualified to get into that in detail. This is not the business I have been in, nor am I a physician. However, I think we're going to have to have a, a serious Congress and a new president to deal with this. This is a serious problem for our country and for all Americans, and we need serious solutions. Let me ask you about the uh, WikiLeaks uh, data dumps that we've been seeing. More emails released yesterday, including one from a Hillary Clinton advisor concerned about her paid speeches on Wall Street. So after a speech that uh, Secretary Clinton gave to Goldman Sachs, Hillary Clinton advisor Mandy Grunwald writes this. Fellow staffers, it's pretty bad. She is critical to some extent of what led to the crash, but the more memorable stuff is totally accommodationist. John, should Trump be more vocal about this issue to voters, or is this not resonating? Well, I think what happens is you got the mainstream media, Maria, who they don't want to hear this. So it's one thing for the Democrats to steal Trump's tax records and publicize them, but it's another thing if WikiLeaks comes out, Democratic strategists, you know, blow that off. Yeah. And so the mainstream media is really in charge of this whole deal. Mm -hmm. And so if Donald Trump, who is a wonderful man and a great leader, by the way, and a great businessman and friend of mine, when he starts t down that path, it looks like he's bashing Hillary Clinton. Yeah. John, it's Tony Sag. You know, there's some really damning and devastating things that are coming out of these WikiLeaks. We know, of course, the media collusion between the Clinton campaign and some major press organizations. The fact that she gave a speech to a Brazilian bank saying she wanted basically no borders, this kind of one world idea of government. This recent revelation that she herself negotiated $12 million from the Moroccan king to give a speech in, in Morocco. And obviously, this is a regime she was critical of as Secretary of State. But when when you look at the media coverage, ABC, CBS, NBC, and CNN are giving eight, seven, five, four minutes per broadcast hour of coverage on Donald Trump scandals to 30 seconds on WikiLeaks. But what's the sense you guys are having on the trail talking to people at these rallies about how effective some of the stuff coming out has been? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, I think the polls are wrong. Uh, if you recall with Brexit, it was a 7% up to not leave the EU. 
And so there's a 10% switch in that, 3% up on the win to leave, uh, to leave the uh, European Union. So I think what's happening here again is people care about things like this and people are reading and despite the fact that the mainstream media is going to try to obfuscate this and turn this into nothing, it really is important and it makes a lot of sense for people to look at it. See, if you think about the, the woman vote, the female vote, females care about safety and security. And since we've had uh, this Obama eight years, America's not as safe, the world is not as safe, and really Obama's singular accomplishment in this eight-year period has been the fact that he can finally get off a teleprompter and make a somewhat halfway decent speech but still stutter. Yeah.